Hi, this is JP from Northern Lights of Arkham. Welcome to the final scenario of the Scarlet Keys campaign playthrough. Uh, it is the Congress of Keys scenario. And uh, let's just first see how we ended up uh, to the last scenario. So, uh, last time uh, we finished the Sanguine Shadows in Buenos Aires, over here. But um, after that we did a lot of globe trotting. So, first off, uh, we traveled here to uh, Quito, and from there to uh, New York City. This is because uh, now we had spent enough time to uh, go to the warehouse Desi told us about, and we got uh, one of the keys that are not from the scenarios from there, so we got the mirror blade key from there, because we knew the password and the uh, required time had passed. But uh, then we uh, got one of our keys stolen, uh, which was the Eye of uh, Raven's key. Uh, that That's annoying, but it happens when enough time has passed. And the culprit was the red gloved man who stole our key. So, uh, because of that, uh, next we went to San Juan to find a Coterry hideout. Uh, we didn't find the key there, so uh, we decided to continue from there to Marrakesh. Uh, we got one experience, I think, from there. Oh yeah, we got two experience for, to, for getting the mirroring blade. Uh, yeah, we didn't get any experience from there. Then in Marrakesh, we arrived uh, so that uh, 25 plus time had passed, so we didn't get to play the dead hit scenario there. Instead, we got one mental. Let's see. Yeah, we got the. Uh, you haven't seen the last of Amaranth, and uh, uh, three experience, and we got, uh, I think, a physical or mental trauma, I can't remember which. By the way, we now have uh, one trauma. Then, uh, after that, I decided to travel to Kabul. So, that is another Kotari hideout. So, here we managed to get back the uh, key that was stolen from us. And we got two experience for, from that. Then, uh, we traveled to Bombay. In Bombay we admired the architecture, because we had done that in Stockholm already. Uh, then uh, we got uh, two experience from that. After that we traveled to Kathmandu, and this is where we uh, got the mysterious whistle. And also we got uh, one <laughs> mental trauma. But we also added one uh, tablet to the back, but we have four, so we got one experience. So, the total of experience we have at this point is 14 experience. And because we are running out of time, we are here at this moment, uh, like uh, 33 time spent. And the campaign ends at 34, or I think 32, uh, or 35, or something like that. We traveled to Tunguska which uh, triggers the final scenario, the Congress of Keys. Then uh, uh, here uh, we did the vote for the Cautery members, and I'm not going into detail what happened there, but we barely lost that vote by five years, which are bad for us, and uh, four nays, which are good for us. So uh, Desi, uh, uh, Thorn, and the Claret Knight and uh, uh, Ese Sahin voted nay, so they will be helping us in the scenario actually. But all of the Coterie members that voted yeah uh, are against us, so they are in the encounter deck. And of course, one of them is the Red Club Man. Okay, well, that is uh, the globe trotting done, so we have 14 experience to spend in our upgrades. So let's hop over to arkhamcdb.com and quickly see what uh, changes I made to the deck. 
Okay, so here is the final deck for the last scenario of the campaign. Uh, I ended up removing Flashlight, I'm out of here, Eon Chart, no, uh, Kicking the Hornet's Nest and Quick Getaway. Uh, changed uh, Flashlight level 3 into the deck. This is a really good card for Kimani because you can also evade with this with minus 2 difficulty. So, uh, and this is uh, this doesn't uh, this can uh, is a optional trigger, so you don't have to spend supplies unless you are succeeding. If you like are nearly succeeding, you can just spend one uh, uh, one supply from it, and it comes into play with four supplies, so it's much better than the regular flashlight. Then uh, I'm trying a new card, which is really good for Kimani. Uh, it is stealth. So this is uh, not good for the first evade, but when you are trying to defeat an enemy, this is a really good card for the second evade. Uh, so it lowers the evade uh, difficulty by two, so you probably could defeat a lot beefier enemies easier with this. So I'm trying it out. And then guess, uh, or how guys or how do you pronounce it I'm not sure uh, this is a really good card I just probably will say that I won't be drawing any cards I will be playing and committing cards but then I'll get plus one to all of my stats and uh, hoping to get this and of course it's uh, exceptional so it costs four experience so it's quite costly but still it is a one-off and uh, this is a uh, uh, under world support deck so one of are the whole deal of the deck lastly uh, I upgraded the Eon chart to level 4 so this is a much better version of the Eon chart so hoping to get it into play and that is every uh, the final deck so every changes I will be making making to the deck hopefully this is good enough uh, to get us uh, get us a win in this scenario there are 37 experience used in this deck so I think that's quite a good result so let's hop back over to the world map for a moment so um, nothing else to say I'll uh, go over the setup uh, so uh, after the vote there are a multiple of setup options so we got setup number one so I'll go through uh, the layout quickly before we start so Without further delay, let's get started. Okay, and we are ready to start the scenario. Um, let's quickly go through what is on the table. There's a lot of cards here, so let's go through them a bit. So I have the three keys I possess myself. So I have the Weeping Lady, the Iron Ravens and the Mirroring Blade. Then we have uh, these coterie members that are helping us. Uh, we have Desi, then we have Esse. They don't have any keys, but then there's Thorn, who has the Sable Glass key, and the Claret Knight, who has the Light of Pharaoh's keys. Then uh, we have in the set setup put the layer locations because of the setup one, and uh, the different setups have different encounter cards we uh, put in the encounter deck. Oh, and there is two encounter decks, so this is the first encounter deck, and this is the second one, which we will use later in the scenario. In the setup, we put the red uh, gloved man into play in the shadows, and uh, uh, he gains uh, Conceal one per investigator. So we have two cards here, uh, which and we um, have to get two clues and find the red gloved man. So we advance when we have two clues and have uh, engaged the Red Blood Man. So that's basically the setup uh, in short. Uh, we also have this uh, Otherworld deck here, which comes into play later. Uh, we don't have to mind it at the moment yet. So uh, we have plenty of damage so here, and uh, let's draw our opening hand. So we redraw that. Uh, we get all in Moxie, Lola Santiago, Disguise, and Stealth. Mm. 
I think uh, we'll keep these three and redraw those two. We want to get at least one tool to investigating. Uh, thief's Kit and Faustian Bargain. So that's great. Thief's Kit is what I really wanted to see. Shuffling the Mulligan cards back into the deck and we are ready to, con uh, to begin. So there is a forced ability here. So after you enter Scarlet Hall for the remainder of your turn as an additional cost for you to move from Scarlet Hall to a connecting location, you must either exhaust a Conspirator as or spend an additional action. So these are conspirators, so uh, we have plenty of the, those to exhaust. Okay, let's begin. So first thing first, we are playing the Thief's Kit. That is a hidden. And I'll just play the Moxie as a quick action. Uh, put it over here. Then uh, that is our well. That was our first action to play the thieves kit. A bit crowded here. Okay, second action. Uh, we'll move to. Might as well go over here. Uh, Coterie Library, uh, Force Rod 1 2. After you fail a skill test while investigating Coterie Library, the nearest Coterie enemy with an attached keyword shifts each of their attached keys. Oh, yeah, and I forgot to attach um, this key to the Red Cloth Man. Okay. Let's see. Um, so we are here. There is one clue here. We uh, as a last action, want to investigate. I'm using the thieves. Oh, ah, dropped it. Okay, well, I'll pick that up later. So I'm using the thieves kit, and uh, I am committing all into the test. So I am investigating. Uh, uh, let's see, five, six. Seven, eight versus four. So uh, we want to succeed by two or more if we so we get two resources. So eight versus four. Okay. Uh, minus two. So we succeed by two or more. So we gain two resources, which is great. Then uh, all in draws us two cards. We get calculated risk and stealth, and that is our turn. Oh yeah, and all in goes out of the deck, so we can't play that anymore. This game, and that is our turn. No enemy actions will go. Through. Oh yeah, we get the clue also. Uh, so no enemy actions will go to upkeep. So we draw Eon chart, great, and we gain a resource. That is that round. Let's go to the next round. Uh, we add another Doom, or the first Doom actually, and counter card is uh, Splintered Space. Attach uh, Splintered Space to your location and test Agility 3. If you fail, take one damage for each Hex treachery attached to your location. Uh, there it is one because this is a Hex. After this test ends, if there are exactly three copies of Splintered Space in play, discard them. So I'm testing uh, five versus. Uh, yeah, five versus three. Not gonna even boost it. Zero, we pass, so we'll just attach this here. Then, uh, first action, I'll play Lola Santiago. And second action, we'll play on chart. Uh, 
Uh, uh, no, we w won't because we don't have the resources yet. Okay, well, we play Lola. Second action, we'll move here. Then I will just solve S S Sahin. Then I'll actually... No, I, I'll just ex exhaust the SA to be able to move again. So I'll move over here. So, Congress Chamber. While there is a ready coterie enemy at the Congress Chamber, increase the cost of each asset paid by each investigator at Congress Chamber by two. Uh, three shroud, one clue. And that is our turn. No enemy actions will go to upkeep. We draw inter report. We gain a resource. Uh, that is that round. Let's go to the next round. Uh, we get another doom. Two of three. Encounter card is locked door. Isn't that annoying? Well, uh, we can investigate this location, but we can surely play inter report, which is great. Or use low. Well, Intel report is cheaper. So, first action, I'll play Intel report and I discover one clue. Ignoring the. Uh, locked door here. Then, uh, this should be ready. Second action, we'll evade this room. So, hopefully we find the Red Clock Man. If not, then that's too bad. But, uh, in evading... 5, 6 versus 3. Elder Sign, it is a plus 1, so we succeed by 4. And it is a decoy, so... Locked out there, so we'll just move over here for next round. Okay, and that is our turn. No enemy actions will go to upkeep. We draw flashlight level three, and we gain a resource. Uh, that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We had a doom, so this advances. Uh, swift as scarlet. If the current act is secret and lies uh, version 1, it is. Uh, ley, lines and of para, uh, ley lines of paradimensional energy surround you, threatening to tear you apart. Each enemy shifts each of their attacks keys immediately result as an additional enemy phase. Then resume the current phase. So, uh, this is shifted. So, Okay, so we'll just place one Doom on the current agenda. No enemies at our location, so we'll just flip this back and put it here. Okay. Then uh, we get an encounter card. Lock door. Uh, we'll just place it over here. So, first action, uh, we will... To let's see, yeah, first action we'll just uh, evade this location's concealed mini card. A tablet is uh, minus two, if it's an attack, it is not, so we'll just skip the rest of that text. So we succeed, and we have the Red Club Man here, and we are engaged with the Red Club Man now. So uh, we'll immediately check if we can. Uh, at the end of the round, each investor at the same locations, Red Club Man, they may spend. Okay, so I'll back up. I forgot I can't do it immediately, so we uh, there are no enemies here. So. 
the first action will get a resource, second action we will play Eon Charge, and last action would be to do the evade. So, let's see. There are three secrets here. Okay, so now we reveal this and uh, this engages with us and it hits us for one damage and one more. We'll just put some damage here. Then uh, we'll go to upkeep, uh, we draw a card. Paradimensional understanding. You must either uh, choose one immediately shift an unstable key you control or flip its stable key you control to its unstable side. Well, um, uh, we'll just have to do this because we don't have a choice. And these are all the keys we control, so that, that sucks. Well, nothing we can do. Then, now we can spend the requested number of tools to advance. Another world, version 1. Remove each location from the game. Uh, put the connected tower, gravity defying climb, and the towering vortex locations in the plane straight vertical line with the towering vortex at the top and the knotted tower at the bottom. Take the top three locations of the other world deck and place them in the shadows. Range in a line from left to right. Take the three City of Remnants mini cards. Shuffle them, face down, and arrange them around the knotted tower as follows one to the, its left, one to its right, and one below. Place each investigator at the knotted tower and the red of man enemy at the towering vortex. Remove the encounter deck and encounter discard pile from the game, replacing them with the second encounter deck. So, there's a lot to do for this setup, so we'll just look up our objective, so it is uh, Act 2 to the tower, locations and concealed minicars can be placed adjacent to tower locations. Objective, find a way into the tower where the infiltrator lies in wait, if an investigator enters the gravity defying climb advance. So I'll do the mid game setup between turns, so uh, it won't bog down the <laughs> Play time or the runtime of the scenario. So that is that round. Uh, let's go to the next round. Okay, and we are done with the mid game setup. So quickly going through. Now uh, the red glove man is in the towering vortex. There is a gravity defying climb and not a tower in play. We should be in a straight line from bottom to up, but uh, because of table space have it in an L shape. So these are connected, but uh, you can't move he from here to here, or if there's a location here, from here to here, or anything like that. Uh, then we have these concealed cards here, which are uh, indicating uh, if we uh, go to one of these locations, uh, we get to one of these into play and it decides which of these is going into play. So, um, yeah, so we can flip these over. These should be like uh, connected to this. And if we flip one of these and a location comes into play, this uh, says that you move to that location from the knotted tower. Okay, well, let's continue. I'll place a zoom onto the agenda. Uh, we have a new encounter deck, so we remove the last one and the discard file and all the cards from that. So, first card from the new one is Apocalyptic Presage. 4 fight, 5 health, 2 evade, monster outsider force. When Apocalyptic Presage enters play, each investigator chooses non-weakest card they control in their hand or play area and set the side out of play as hollow. So, after an investigator's location sets a card aside as hollow exhaust torn, that investigator may, may take an immediate action as if it were their turn. So, I will place Faustian Bargain 
uh, it is uh, can it be any car non weakness car so anything goes so this enemy is engaged with us I'll just put it on here and uh, I'll put, uh, put the Faustian Park on uh, as a hollow. Then I'll exhaust Thor and I'll make an immediate action. So I'm uh, immediately evading this enemy. Uh, minus four, so I have. Six minus two, so that succeeds fairly. Okay. So that enemy is evaded at least. And it is not a hunter, so we can just get away from here and leave it here. Okay, I'll just put it over there. So we need some clues. Uh, we need to get clues. Because this look, uh, we need to get up the um, tower, so uh, the gate gravity defying climb is sealed and forgotten. As an additional cause to enter gravity defying climb, investigators at the not the tower must spend four clues. So we need to go in search of clues. So, so uh, I'll first do Aeon chart. So I will use it I will evade one of these concealed mini cards then I will investigate as a second uh, yeah so five six against three so that is enough we'll go down here so we get city of remnants R so Le left, middle, right. So concealed one. So we take a concealed uh, decoy card, shuffle these. Uh, first, when you expose this location, if it is the left position, shadows lose two resources. If it's the middle position, uh, lose one action. So we didn't expose it. Put it here and move there. One clue for shroud. I think we can do that. Let's see. Um, after you reveal, we wield effigies. Look at the top card of your deck. If it's not a weakness, set it aside out of play as hollow. Fast trigger ability. If there are no clues on the wheel, they either swap the position of two concealed mini cards adjacent to locations or swap the position of two locations in the shadows. Group limit once per game. So we'll do this. And uh, uh, then we investigate here. Uh, I am investigating. Oh, yeah, I forgot I have to do it the basic action because I'm using the taboo list. So. Uh, let's see. Uh, I will do it uh, like this. I'll flip this. I'll play a card from my hand at minus three cost. I'll play the flashlight. Again, it doesn't matter, but I'm just playing it down, so I ha have it for later okay so trying to investigate two versus four it is a skull axis to come current act number so we fail yeah I forgot the 
that is a shame, but it is what it is. So, first action of the round, we'll use three thieves kit to investigate. Investigating. Um, oh yeah, we had to do the hollow thing. So nimble goes here as a hollow. Okay, so uh, five, six, seven versus four minus two. Uh, we succeed by only one, so we get one resource, but we get the clue. Then I will play stealth down, and I will reveal another uh, or. Um, Evade one of these concealed mini cards. Elder sign. We succeed, so I'll go here. Okay, so yeah, we had to fulfill this, so we'll go here again. Uh, when you expose this location, if it's the left position, no, if it's the middle position, no, if it's the right position, in the shadows take one horror. Okay, who wants a horror? I think you are the useless. Then, uh, Cliff of Insanity. Uh, three shroud, two clues. After you reveal Cliff of Insanity, move each concealed mini card adjacent to it so they are arranged as evenly as possible. Oh, yeah. Um, never mind. Because we don't move there yet. But we'll still do the uh, this this uh, shuffle here and put these here. Okay. And that is our turn. No enemy actions. We'll go upkeep. Be ready. We draw a card. Uh, this enemy also ready is here. But it is another hunter, so that's good. So we get dirty fighting, which is good. And we get resource. Uh, that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We had a doom, so this advances, but now that we are not in Act 1, so we, if it is Act 2, 3 or 4, skip the B side of this agenda and advance directly to Agenda 2A. So, uh, the world unbidden, 10 shroud, uh, I mean 10 uh, doom threshold. Then we get an encounter card. It is secrets lost, test willpower 3, for each point you fail by Choose an on weakest card in your hand and set it aside out of play as hollow. If you succeed by two or more, you may take one or to choose a set aside hollow. Okay, now we are testing three versus three. Uh, might as well try. So I'm commit, uh, using Moxie To boost my willpower by one at least, so we are testing four versus one. Uh, it is a tablet, it isn't an attack, so where is the here? So for each point you fail by choosing on weakness card. Okay, so I'll put the calculated risk, and that is that. So, first action. Now uh, we'll move to City of Remnants. Now, for, after you reveal uh, Clift of Sin Insanity, uh, move each concealed mini card adjacent to it so they are arranged as evenly as possible in empty spots adjacent to locations not named Clift of Insanity. So we can't move further to the left from here. So. This goes here, this goes here. Okay. But there are two clues, so we'll get these clues and go find another location. Uh, then I will investigate using the thief's kit. Investigating uh, six versus uh, seven versus three. Minus one, uh, we get two resources. Get one clue. 
Last action, I will uh, investigate again. Seven versus three, uh, using the thief's kit. Uh, did I already check? The, well, I, I don't mind. So seven versus three. Uh, cultist is a minus five. If you uh, you may flip a stable key you control to make minus two instead. We'll we'll just fail. We don't have any unstable. Uh, we have uh, yeah we don't have because we don't control these. They're controlled by these guys. Oh well. Next turn maybe. So no enemy actions will go to upkeep. Uh, we get I'll take that and again a resource. Uh, that is that round. No, actually, hold the phone. <laughs> Back up. So it is a minus five. We were failing by two. So. Oh, yeah, there is another window to boost with Moxie. Never mind. So. Uh, we get a card and we gain a resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a doom. Uh, then the encounter card for this round is uh, Paradimensional Terror Peril. A uh, revelation you must decide choose one trip each decoy over shuffle it. Um, each investigator takes one damage and one more. I'll take that option. So let's put them here. Because it's not direct. We can't put them on ourselves because Moxie would be breaking, but yeah. And uh, that is that. So, first action. Uh, let's see. Uh, we'll investigate using the Thieves Kit. Uh, so, we are investigating seven, five, six, seven, versus three. Uh, minus two. So we grab this clue. Second action. Well, uh, before that, I'll use one secret to uh, move and evade. So we'll move. Then I will use this. Reveal. Look at the revealed side of each concealed mini guard at the location. So we check. These are decoys, so we want to reveal this one. Then we'll evade this one. So we are four. Oh yeah, um, we succeeded at investigating. So I'll uh, use this. So I cheapened the, uh, playing the dirty fighting by two. Yeah, because we succeed by two or something. And. Oh no, it's it's an item. It needs to be an item as it's so let's back up. Okay. Well, uh, we'll just in evade here. I'm committing this card. So evading five, six, seven versus four. And I'll actually do this so it's too easier. So uh, I'm not committing this. So, 7 versus 2. Minus 5. Well, lucky that was enough. So, we'll reveal this one. And put... Oh yeah, th this needs to be revealed. So, we'll get this one. Uh, when you expose this location, if it's in the middle, if it's in the right, Set an asset you control aside out of play as follow. What asset would that be? I think a Thief's Kit has served its purpose, unfortunately. No, it's too good to put out. I think we'll just put this Moxie. Because we are in danger of losing it soon enough. Okay, so this comes here. We'll do this and we'll now put one of these here. So 
Okay. And next action we'll move down here. Uh, two shot, one clue. Increase the difficulty of fight or evade each in concealed minicar at Rambling Route by two. Uh, action spend X resources. Choose a concealed minicar and chase into a location X connection away. Look at this revealed side without exposing it. Good okay. okay, well, we just want the clue basically from here. I'm just checking. Do we need to get clues to get to the this one? No. Okay. So using the thieves kit, investigating uh, seven versus two. Minus two will gain two resources. And. Uh, Now oh, this is a good one to get rid of, and we get the clue. So that is the our round. No enemy actions will go to upkeep. We draw Ancient Fletcher, and we gain a resource. So we need to get rid of Ancient Fletcher, and we ready up. So that is that. Let's uh, that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We'll add another Doom, Encounter Cardis. Uh, Ancient Evils. Well, we'll add one Doom here. Three of ten. Okay, uh, first thing first, we want to use the Ian chart. No. First thing first, we will uh, evade Ancient Fletcher. Evading five, six uh, versus three. Uh, seven versus three. Minus two, we succeed. So, Agent Fletcher is evaded. Uh, I'll use the Eon chart to evade Agent Fletcher. And uh, we first engage it. We'll use this uh, stealth to lower the evasion value by two, so we are evading. Actually, before I use that, I'll play the dirty fighting. So I'll get plus two to this skill test. So I'm nine versus one, and I need to succeed by three. Minus two, we defeat Agent Fletcher. Uh, remember that we don't add our intellect when evading Agent Fletcher, but we defeated Agent Fletcher, then we get to move And, uh, oh yeah, that was the Ian chart, so then uh, we will, let's see. Uh, do we want to move this round? Yeah, we'll just move and evade. So this engages us, we'll evade, uh, evading uh, 7, 5, 6 uh, versus... Minus two, so we succeed. That is evaded. Uh, no enemy actions will go to upkeep. We draw backstab, gain a resource. That engages us again. And that is that round. Let's go to the next round. And we add another Doom and counter card for this round. Is uh, so we'll just take one damage and one horror. One damage, one horror. Uh, I can take them on my... Well, I'll put them on Thorn. Okay, uh, first action. We will uh, evade this enemy. I'm uh, using the stealth for this one. So it is zero auto fail. <laughs> evade again. Uh, we succeed. It is a minus two, and it is minus two. So it doesn't exhaust actually, but it disengages from us. So then we'll move up here and spend the 
uh, clues. So, spending the clues here. So, uh, find a way to the tower where the influencer lies in wait. It's an investigator and there's a gravity defying climb advance. So, into the tower, set each concealed mini card side out of play, remove each city of remnants in the shadows and the remainder of the other world deck from the game, take the city. Three city of remnants concealed mini cards and one decoys per player. Shuffle them face them and arrange them array around gravity defying climb in a random order. So I'll again do that setup change during the uh, um, in between turns. So now objective ascend if an investigator enters the towering vortex advance. And there is here a uh, force round, force when a concealed mini card around gravity defined time is explored. If it is, the next uh, in the sequence listed in the tower in vortex, it remains in play and exposed, and you may expose another concealed mini card. Any other mini card, flip it, and each other concealed mini card lays down without shuffling them. But I'll do that in uh, between turns. So no enemies will go to upkeep. Uh, we draw grappling hook, gain a resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. Okay, and uh, now we've done the second mid game setup. So uh, basically, we just removed all the concealed cards from the game. Then we took the uh, left, middle, right. Um, cards and one decoy per player so we have four cards here then to enter here we need to uh, reveal these in order so we need to reveal them in order of uh, l m and r and after we uh, advance uh, or get to move there we can advance so uh, first off we'll add a doom so five of them Elm counter card for this round is frozen in fear. Well, of course. Well, <clears throat> um, if we move fight or evade each round, it costs one additional. Well, that sucks. So, uh, let's see. We'll play grappling hook, removing the thief skits. Second action, we will. Uh, well, it's a double action to evade. So we are evading using stealth. So we are evading against two. So we are five, six, uh, six versus two. It is a minus two, so we succeed. So let's just start from the order here. So we find the middle so it's that is the wrong one but we know that that is the second one we need to reveal and that is our turn we'll test the frozen fear uh, three versus three minus two we don't get rid of that so that is that round or that uh, investigation phase will go to upkeep because there are no enemies uh, we draw a card, sneak attack, and we gain a resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add another Doom, so 6 of 10. Uh, encounter card is uh, Paradigm, Effacer, Aloof Hunter. After you end your turn in Paradigm, Effacer's location, look at the top card of your deck. If it's not a weakness, add, uh, set it aside out of play as a hollow. But then, if you own three or more set aside hollows, Paragrim Effacer attacks you. Uh, okay, well, I think we are double evading this, this round. Or uh, we'll actually backstab it. So, backstabbing it. Uh, no, because we need to engage it. It's another move. So we'll engage and 
well, we need to double it. Right? That's not helpful. Okay, so our whole journey is to backstab. We'll just play the backstab. Uh, we are fighting... Five... Six... Uh, three... Minus two... If you... Um, if this is an attack against a ready outsider enemy, you automatically fail instead, so we fail. That sucks. Okay, so that enemy attacks me. <sighs> yeah, uh, let's first test the frozen here. Minus three, so we don't get rid of that. So that enemy attacks us for one damage and four. Nolas and Tiago takes that. Then we have to put this as an hollow, and then this guy attacks us again. Oh yeah, it, it's the top card of my deck. So this goes there. Okay, well, still. It attacks us again. Or, actually, <clears throat> if it attacks us, it's uh, exhausted, so we only take the attack once. Yeah. So, that's that. So, we'll go to upkeep. We get lucky secret case and one resource. That is that round. Let's go to the next round. Oh, yeah, and... Uh, last round I forgot to test the frozen fear, so I'll just test it again. So we at least get rid of this. Okay, no exhausted enemies, that would have been nice to finally. Well, uh, it doesn't matter. So we'll add the Doom, uh, 7 of 10 encounter cardies. Memory variant. Put memory variant into play next to the agenda deck. After the event is played, instead of discarding it, set it aside. Other players follow. Okay. And we can get rid of that by testing the power. So, uh, first action uh, we will engage. Second action we will invade. Uh, five, six. Uh, against three, so plus one we succeed, and we'll engage again, and we will double evade. So five, six, seven, eight against the one. Uh, before that, we will play the lucky secret case. Nine versus one. Minus five. We still succeed by enough. So we get to draw a card. Chuck Fergus. This is discarded. And that's our turn. No enemies will go to upkeep. We draw the moon, gain a resource. That is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add another doom. Then counter card for this round is Otherworldly Mimic. Aloof Hunter. If Otherworldly Mimic is ready, when an investigator at the, its location plays, commits or triggers an ability on a copy of Set Aside Hollow, uh, it attacks that investigator. Okay. I think we are <laughs> killing that one too. Because this will hunt us and uh, make it harder for us to do anything at the finale. So engaging it's in then uh, Uh, 
dividing it. I'll just kill it with that. So uh, first, I'll play the moon. No. Yeah. Play. No, and I don't have enough actions. Okay, so just evading. And uh, I. This should be exhausted. So five, six against four. Minus two. Evaded. Engaging it again, evading it again. Using this to lower it. And it is defeated. Or uh, discarded actually. But that's our turn again. No enemy action to so upkeep. We draw breaking and entering and gain our source. So not making any progress, but it is what it is. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. He had a doom, 9 of 10, encounter card is, secrets lost, uh, testing 3 versus 3. Minus 1, uh, we'll set one card aside as hollow, and I'll put uh, breaking and entering. And... Uh, that's it. Okay, first action. Now, finally, we get to do what we need to do here. Uh, I'll play the moon. Then I will uh, evade this card. And I'll use this to lower the shroud by two. So we are uh, evading 5, uh, we will use this also, so we are uh, evading against 0 basically, so we succeed, we will draw a card with the lucky cigarette case, <laughs> a typophobia, well, don't matter, okay, so we left, then we do it again. Okay, so how does this work? Okay, so we'll expose another mini card, which is this. Now we need to figure out which of these is the right one. So we'll go here, and it is the correct one. So let's see. Um, Okay, so now we can enter here. Okay, and we advance. <coughs> so windows and doors, set each concealed mini card aside out of, out of place. Swap the set aside mimi, uh, mimetic nemesis enemy with the red club man enemy of the war, uh, towering vortex. Take the mimetic uh, nemesis minion card and two decoys per player. Shuffle them face down and arrange them around the towering vortex in a random order. And then, uh, action flip a stable key to you control it uh, to its unstable side, remove an exposed decoy from the game. If Mimetic Nemesis is defeated, advance. Where can I put the location? Uh, seriously, where did I put the location? Oh yeah. So, uh, these are removed. We 
we get uh, this one, Mimetic Nemesis and two decoys. Now we have the two decoys here. We shuffle these. They are here. Shroud of Dislocation is six, so that's really high. So this goes away. And this is in the shadows. So, uh, Mimetic Nemesis 5 fight, 3 health, 5 evade, Ancient 1 outsider lead, Massive cannot take make attacks of opportunity. Mimetic Nemesis gets plus 3 health per investigator, so 6. When Mimetic Nemesis would take one or more damage from an attack or play a card, choose and reveal a concealed mini card. If it is a decoy, cancel all damage just dealt. The decoy remains in play and face up. Otherwise, the damage is dealt as normal, then flip all revealed mini cards face down and shuffle them. And uh, then, uh, when a concealed mini card uh, around the towering vortex is exposed, if it is the mimetic uh, nemesis mini card, deal the mimetic nemesis 3 damage. Then flip all concealed mini cards face down and shuffle their face down a decoy. It remains in play exposed. So, we need to uh, find the correct one from these two times to defeat this enemy. Uh, for now, I think I will tank the damage one turn, but now I will play sneak attack. And uh, uh, we can't play because those are exhausted. Damn. I will just uh, evade one of these. And I'll use the flashlight to lower the value by two. So it's uh, five, six versus four. Minus two. Um, this one. Okay, so we deal three damage right away. That's good. So these are sh shuffled again. Okay, <clears throat> then uh, enemy face the uh, mimetic nemesis hits for three damage and three horror. I'll just tank it. So I'll take three damage and three horror. Uh, no enemy, other enemy actions will go to upkeep. We draw trench coat and get the source. Uh, we didn't play the sneak attack. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. Try to kill off this thing. So uh, let's go to the next round. Uh, we add a doom so this advances. Hopefully we are still we still get to try and defeat this guy. So, trans-dimensional shock. Flip each decoy over. They are already. Shuffle all concealed mini cards in play. The, uh, flip each decoy over. Uh, there are none. Yeah, not not the keys. The decoys. Shuffle each concealed mini card in play. Then place them in the position they were in. I'll just do that again. So. <clears throat> Shift an unstable key, take control without its investigator takes two damage and two horror, but may either shift an unstable key, take control without flipping it to its stable side to cancel all the damage and horror. Okay, so I'll shift.
I'll just shift this and this goes as a hollow. And it won't flip. Okay. Then that's that. Uh, running red. So seven doom threshold encounter card for this round is dissonant voice. We can't play events or assets. That doesn't bother us. So, um, we will evade one of these concealed mini cards. Let's start from the left. Might as well. So, I'll lower the shroud and that. So, we are uh, evading five, six versus two. Uh, seven versus two. And it is a plus one. We'll draw a card. Uh, yeah, and uh, so leftmost. Okay, so we got super lucky. Uh, it is the Mimet Nemesis. I will defeat that enemy. So if Mimetic Nemesis is defeated, advance. So of goldfish and whales. The entity collapses upon itself, its worldless streets wash, uh, washing over the world and worlds beyond, reverberating through uh, your skull, tearing you apart molecule by molecule. You remain tethered uh, by reality only to, by the energy of your keys, which endure even as all else implodes around you. There is a sensation of tugging at the back of your skull, a feeling of being yanked by a uh, Fish hook out of a ravage uh, out of ravage waters, then darkness. Resolution one. Well, this is actually the first time I'm uh, the second time I'm playing this whole uh, campaign, and the first time I'm, I have uh, got this resolution. So let's see what happens. So resolution one. Uh, the feeling of being flung across worlds does not cease until you strike solid ground. Uh, though your very body protects, uh, protests, you scamper to your feet and scan your surroundings ready for anything. But when you realize where you are, you are shocked to find it. Uh, lay out the world map on a flat surface. Each investigator tosses a coin or chaos token onto the map. Wherever it lands, that is where the investigators ended up. Well, let's say ended up on London. <clears throat> if it is a land in an ocean, they ended up by chance on a random boat. Okay. It uh, takes several weeks for you to contact the other members of your cell for who survived the collapsing of the outsider's realm. It seems that at least for now their scheme has been dis dismantled. Perhaps a long earned vacation is in order, but first there is one last order of business to resolve. In your camp log, record the outsider's worst thoughts. Each investigator suffers two physical trauma and two mental trauma as they may never truly recover from the paradimensional ordeal. Each investigator earns experience equal to the victory axe value of each card in the victory display. Each investigator earns five bonus experience having saved their dimension from a terrible fate. The investigators win the campaign. Proceed to the epilogue. And I won't be reading the epilogue here because it's quite lengthy and I want uh, you to discover it by yourselves. But that was the Scarlet Keys campaign with Jumani Jones. Uh, happy uh, succeed uh, at the end there and uh, a win for the campaign. Uh, I will be doing a second, uh, one more um, video on this series just to give my final thoughts on the campaign as a whole and how I like it uh, and all that good stuff. But uh, for this time, hope you guys like this playthrough. Thanks for watching and until next time.